Okay guys, this is Dr. Brown from Kubo Math coming to you from Tarlock City, Philippines. Hopefully you guys are doing well. You recall our last video, we looked at the Algebra 1 rules and hopefully you guys have studied, studied, studied. And tonight we're going to talk about just some real numbers, various types of numbers and how they interact in Algebra. So it's just an overview of numbers in general. Now, real numbers, we think about any number you can think of, that's a real number, because you probably haven't learned complex numbers yet, which there's actually another number line that runs perpendicular to this, but we, we'll get into that some other time. But it, it allows you to look at complex numbers. But for now, let's just talk about real numbers, and that's all negative, zero, and positive numbers. So any number you can think of, square root of a billion, it's in there. Number negative five is in there. All of those are there, including zero. Now, natural numbers, it's the group of numbers that are one, two, three, four, five, up through infinity. It does not include zero or any negative numbers. Now, whole numbers, you'll see denoted here by W, is the group of numbers that do include 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way as high as you can imagine. Now, integers, they are numbers. They are, you could say, well, they're really a type of whole numbers. They are because they do include zero through infinity, but they also include negative numbers all the way through minus infinity, the largest number and even goes beyond anything we can fathom. So here's our real number line. We discussed that in our last video. So rational numbers denoted by a large Q or P divided by a small Q. Now this little symbol, I should talk about those, this little E looking thing, it means is an element of. So in this case, P, the numbers in the numerator of this quotient, it's on the top. P, they're an element of Z, which are my integers. Q, small q, is an element of N of the natural numbers. Now you'll, you, you might ask, well, why is that? Well, Q, you'll notice, since it's an element of n, the natural numbers, it does not include zero. We can't divide by zero. If you were to take your calculator and say five divided by zero, it would give you an error message and show that the results are either undefined or infinite. Uh, mine actually shows error infinite results. It just goes crazy. The calculator, <laughs> calculator wants to explode, so don't try that. So that's why it lists that small q this, that's in the denominator is an element of the natural numbers because it does not include zero. An irrational number is a number that cannot be expressed as p over q. So rational could be expressed by P over Q, and irrational cannot. Can you think of an example that could not be expressed by a number that was an integer divided by a natural number? What about square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 17? None of those can be expressed as a fraction like this, dealing with an integer divided by a natural number. So they're called irrational. So here's some questions I've laid out here. Uh, why is n a subset, and I should say this little c looking item means is a subset of. Why is the natural numbers a subset of whole numbers. So if you think about, let me grab a pen here, if you think about a bucket, so I have a bucket here, and that bucket has the values that are associated with my whole numbers. 
0, 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 6, 8, and then I have a 5, 7, 9, I have all those numbers, 0 through infinity. Okay, so it's saying if I were to reach in that bucket, can I grab a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4? And yes, I can. So all of the natural numbers would be in the W bucket. So this is my whole number bucket. And I can grab that. So that would mean that N is in fact a subset of W. Okay, so yes it is. And that's why I can pull all of those out of the bucket. So why is N a subset of large Q. Large Q was rational numbers. I'm sorry, why is Z not a subset of N? Let's go back to number two here. Why is Z not a subset of N? So N was my natural numbers. Uh, Z was my integers. Why, is, why are the integers not a subset of N? Okay, let's take my bucket of n. So this is my bucket of n which was my natural numbers. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up as high as I can count. Z are my integers. Can I reach into that bucket and get a negative three, a negative two? a one, a zero, and no, I cannot. So that would mean that my Z, my integers, are not a subset of my natural numbers because not all of them are in there. Now, if I were to turn that around, and this is a bucket of integers, that all of these numbers are there, yes, in fact, I could pull all the natural numbers out so n then would be a subset of my integers, but not the other way around. So this is, this is, you know, they are not a subset. So number three, why are the, the natural numbers a subset of rational numbers? Why are the natural numbers a subset of these. Well, you'll notice uh, that Q, my, what I'm dividing by, it is an element of N. So now it says if I have a bucket of Q out here, I could pull N out of that bucket. I could pull these out of there. And go back to this one, number four, why is Z not a subset of I? So I have now all the irrational numbers. Why are the integers not a subset of the, in, of the irrational numbers? Well, if I have a bucket of, let's just do that. I have a bucket full of this uh, irrational numbers. I wish they used different labeling. Sometimes it's a little confusing. I have a square root of 2, a square root of 3, a square root of 5, square root of 17. I have all kinds of numbers that are irrational that cannot be defined by P over Q. So it's asking why is, uh, are these integers not a subset of that? Can I pull a 3 out of there? No. Can I pull a 7 out of there? No. I, do, I can't pull these integers out of that because they're irrational numbers. So that's why the Z is not a subset of my irrational numbers. My integers is not a subset of irrational. Now one item I want to cover before I close would be unions and intersections. We have all these sets we've talked about, but we haven't discussed things that we used in electronics dealing with logic gates. 
it would be the union of something, it's a U, and then the intersection of something. Now, in the electrical logic, we define these as an or something that's ORD, A or B. A union B is the same as A or B. And then A intersection B is the same as A and B. So if you think about two sets here, A and B, A is defined as the set of numbers of 2, 4, 6, 8. B is defined as 1, 3, 6, 7. If I want to know A or B, it then is everything that's in A and everything plus everything that's in B. So I have a 1, a 2, a 3, 4, I don't have a 5, I have a 6, a 7, and an 8. So A or B would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. But A and B then would be what's in this set, what's in A and is, is in B. So I don't have one that's in both. The set. Oh, there's a six that's in both. And that's it. So A and B would be six. So this is just an example of real numbers, the real number line, natural whole and integers, rational, irrational uh, numbers, and then how those interact into sets and then looking at the intersection or, or union of those sets, A or B, or together, or A and B. So this is just a simple overview. We'll get into some more detail as the lessons go along. But in your, your beginning algebra, you're, they're going to walk you along slowly. In our next video, we'll start discussing variables. And it won't be long. The math will kick in and you'll love it. So look at the algebra rule video that came out uh, last time. Study that one because you're going to need that in depth as we move along. Always good to talk to you and remember study, study, study and practice your math and together let's build a better tomorrow. Thank you.